What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire, the man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through this weekend's NFL slates. Um, we'll talk through, we'll go game by game on Saturday and Sunday, and then we'll do Monday, uh, sorry, Saturday and then Sunday as well. Uh, maybe we'll even touch on Monday at quick glance, but I don't, I haven't done much research for that, but still, I think we're okay. We have, we kind of have an idea of what we're doing at this point of the season. Sheets, any overall thoughts or takes on this? Uh, yeah, this so Saturday? I want to, I want to run a take by you, and you're going to tell me if it's BS or, or it makes sense or you know, your experience, whatever. So s- similar to the the NBA, I guess, you know, these, these teams, you know, I don't want to say screw around, but they they injury management, they do whatever, and and they they give guys shots and do whatever. And then and then they get into the playoffs, and then all the NBA guys play 47 minutes, right? Mm-hmm. And, and and they give it to the top guys and guys like freaking uh Bo Champ, you never hear from them again. Thank God, you know and stuff like that. You know, mm-hmm. um, I'm 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 kind of thinking that that's what's supposed to happen in the NFL in the playoffs. Um, and I thought of that because listen, it's a two game slate, so you're, you're going to get like you use Saberson or whatever. You're going to get like all kinds of like weird bills, for example, and you get weird players. And I'm looking at some of these guys, and I'm like, like do I want to really play like James Hasty like in the playoffs? You know, like, like, yeah. how, like, how many rushes? How many touches he actually going to get? Like, for example, I don't think anybody's like, even considering these things, right? What's that? I don't think anybody's considering these things, right? No, I'm just saying, if you build like 50 lineups and you only know, have two games to choose from, you're going to get some weird. Some this is what got me thinking, right? I just got some James Hasty, like a couple of lineups, you know, right. and then and then and then I got a couple of lineups with like Joshua Kelly, like Kelly or something like that, and then I'm thinking to myself, I'm saying to myself, I'm saying self. Maybe just just play, especially with the running backs or whatever, just play the starters, you know, play play the top guys and don't even screw around with that at all. And then I started thinking maybe do the same thing with the receivers. So that that was like my overall like look at the playoffs is don't they they listen, they make they make pricing easy for you usually, right? So there's no real need, I don't think, to get uber fancy with your plays because you really run the risk of getting zeros when when other guys are literally get all the work. So that was my overall take on the playoffs. Does that make any? Is, is, is that overdoing it, or is that? No, I just I just don't think that's that, to me. That's like to, to talk about a bunch of guys who are going to be one percent owned. I don't think is like I don't. I just don't feel like that's a really relevant factor to me. I think okay. that there are guys who you can con, con, consider in that, but I I think you're going to have to make some uncomfortable choices. So I actually have a little bit of a okay. take because it's it's just you know there is randomness in touchdowns like you know. And and for San Francisco, for example, where like, you know, no one will play Juwan Jennings, maybe playing something like that, or you know what I mean. But I, but yeah, I think that mostly you're going to see the the main players play. I don't. I I think that maybe you did some some builds and they came up with that. Yeah. Stuff. I don't think anybody's coming up with like. I don't think that's like a okay. people like going out there trying to play Michael Hasty. Wait, Mike Mike Williams is out. Yeah, Mike Williams is out. Is this this out on top of the slate? I um, it just happened this morning. Oh, okay. Why don't we so, pull your screen up and we'll go game by game here? Yeah, let's talk about the games. I mean, who, who okay. do you like in the games? Uh, I can't see how Seattle's going to win this game. Uh, really can't. And yet it feels like they could cover. <laughs> I guess I guess that's what I have for the game. Um, I do think both of the receivers are interesting. It's going to be a tougher matchup for Metcalf. So I might, I might be more inclined to use Lockett. And... This is a spot where you might want to consider, like, I don't look, the, the K Johnson thing, I don't know if I really, like, and they use both tight ends a little bit, and, and but I but I think it is viable to get, you know, to get a, a, a like, some exposure to Seattle, and you've got Kenneth Walker is 5,900, so my favorite plays on Seattle are probably Lockett, um, probably Lockett and... Kenneth Walker, but I don't mind if you want to get a Geno stack, and on San Francisco... I think that you have to like. I think one of Debo, Ayuk, or Kittle should be in your lineups on a two-game slate. Probably, possibly two of them, and that's one way to. I don't, it won't be like different, different, but it, it, you know, playing the San Francisco passing game and then ignoring McCaffrey, um, who's going to be crazy popular, might be an interesting way to go. And I think Elijah Mitchell and McCaffrey in the same lineup is viable. I, I, I think that's that's completely fair. And I, th- that is the guy I think you do want to get exposure to because he's not like they, they've used him all season long when it's just when he went out, McCaffrey started going nuts. 
it makes a big difference when he's in there because he does. I mean, what did he have two touchdowns last week in the in the last must win game? I know that some of the game was sort of in control, but you know, he he's a he's a good runner. And I think that that's one way you could consider maybe getting a little bit weird, but you're going to have to make some uncomfortable things. And then, as I mentioned, I think Juwan Jennings is an interesting, like, you know, play just because of the, the, the lack of ownership. And we've seen him have big games in the past every year. It seems like he has what like a two touchdown game and a big one touchdown game. And if this is the spot, you're going to be way ahead of everybody. It's just, it's uncomfortable. It doesn't feel great. It's just guys I'm mentioning. What well, do you, I mean, the fact, why, the fact why don't we pull up your screen? Oh, you want to you do it that way? Okay. Um, okay, let's. Uh, let me just see something. Um, okay. What I was going to say, I mean, the, the fact is, is that this does this is the you know the much lower total, right? And 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 the bigger spread. I mean, I imagine I imagine that the majority. I, I was about to say, I imagine the majority of the of the of the plays, or at least the game script plays are going to come from the clip from the Clippers from the, from, from the Chargers Jacksonville game. But the thing about the Seattle piece that, 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 you know, is interesting is that, is that I know, I know what, what's going on, you know, like Kenneth, Kenneth right. Walker is going to be getting the ball a bunch. Uh, if they can, if they can make it work, um, they're going to find Metcalf and lock it. And then the rest is going to be spread around. Tell me about the K Johnson. Cause he was another guy that came up into some bills. I'm like, who the hell is that? Is he like an actual guy that's like, a receiver that's in play. I mean, it, in play, probably less so than than Jennings. He's had okay. four catches this season. Okay, but Kay Johnson, he's on Seattle, right? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, Jennings actually, he's like he's an actual football. I mean, he, I've actually seen him, right? Yeah, he I've played. Actually, I've actually played him. You know, I mean, he's an actual person. Yeah. Um, uh, and and you know what, fans, you know, yeah, I suppose. But they 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 get the other guys the ball too. I mean, uh, Parkinson, you know, he gets in there too. And listen, we talk about this. You know, that San Francisco is really going to be bringing the heat as they usually do. Um, it's a lot easier to find the tight. It is a lot easier to find the tight ends than it is to find find Metcalf. <laughs> it just is. Right. Um, uh, so my my point was that even though the Jacksonville uh, Charger game is the higher total with probably the better spread and game environment. The fact is, is that I know where the targets are going on Seattle. So that makes them kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And on the San Francisco side. Yeah. I mean, I, you, I'm a fan. <laughs> uh, I don't think that, that Purdy is going to be the, I, I, I actually think quarter, I have Purdy is probably the third quarterback, fourth, third. I have probably the fourth quarterback I would play, honestly, of the four. Um, I don't think they're going to put it in his hands. I really don't. I think, if anything, they're going to let him, you know, find, find, find Ayuk where he can, find Kittle where he can. But it's going to, I think it's going to, they're going to try to get this done with McCaffrey. I really do. Um, and I think, I think Gino is going to be much more pressed to, pressed to score fantasy points. Let's put it that way. And I think that that second game, too. So I don't know if I'm going to get to Purdy himself that much. I'm finding it difficult to fade the McCaffrey. I know you, you know, he's going to be like a million percent owned. Actually, that's not true. I mean, they're, they're four good running backs in the slate. You know what I mean? Like, Walker's great. I mean, listen. It's money the way they're, not, they're all too cheap, so you can yeah. spend money somewhere. It's a tough spot, but Walker's Walker's good. Eckler's great. And and, and Etienne, too, you know? So, uh, if you can get away with it, right? If you, if you can fade, fade – uh, you can fade McCaffrey. And he can score 25, and you can still win, you know? Um so I don't know. I, I, listen, I, I said, go back to the original original point. Kittle, McCaffrey, these are the reliable guys, right? Like, right Kittle, right. McCaffrey, and then I'll – so what, was Debo playing? Is that what you said? Um, I think yeah, between I, Debo and Ayuk, they might – I don't know. I, I'll, I'll stick with, the, with Kittle and uh, McCaffrey is my main guys. And obviously the San Francisco defense is really strong. Um uh, they're, they're gonna be. I imagine they're gonna be really popular. No. Uh, yeah, they'll be the shot. They'll be the touchdown defense for sure. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned you mentioned Mitchell. I mean, listen, on a two game slate, ball gets down to the three yard line after McCaffrey rushes for rushes for twenty. You know, it, they'll they'll pull McCaffrey out. You know what I mean? And let, let Mitchell slam it in there. So, um, I, I think that's I think that's a pretty good play. And I like your Jennings call. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I guess we hammer this game. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for, the, for that one. Let's talk about the Chargers and and Jacksonville. I do like the Chargers to win this game, but feels very uncomfortable to, to take the Chargers ever, to be honest with you, like because they're just always weird. And then a lot of people are saying, oh, the two and a half spread isn't enough, which I kind of agree with in theory, but the Chargers are almost always within a field goal. <laughs> like, so I don't know what to do with that in terms of actual betting. I do think the Chargers are – a better team. I, I don't think Jacksonville would ever hammer them. I think they could hammer Jacksonville. Um, so with that said, uh, these are the top quarterbacks. I think uh, pretty obviously um, I prefer Herbert, but I'm good with, uh, with uh, Lawrence as well. Um, I don't think Purdy is going to be as popular as maybe even projected right now, because I think people will play these guys, which makes me have a little bit of interest in Purdy. Um and I think that, uh, that, that you know, you're going to have massive ownership on Eckler as well, because you can get it. You can get Eckler and, and McCaffrey. Um, so I like the idea of maybe, uh, I mean, the, the, the projections are wrong, but Josh Palmer, I like a lot. Um, obviously, Keenan Allen. But because of the ownership, I might go Palmer over Allen, and that also saves me a little bit. I also think you can throw DeAndre Carter into your mix. Um I really like, I, I, you know, I want to take shots on on the low on guys who are cheap and he is one of them. Um, I'm not really getting to a ton of uh, Gerald Everett, but I, I have no problem with that at all. Um, I would prefer, I really like Evan Ingram as the priority on the other side. I know he's going to be popular as well, but he is my favorite of the tight ends. Um, and on the, and on the Jacksonville side, Zay Jones, that price is, I mean, I understand that we have like, they priced everyone down so you could sort of play everyone for the playoffs. But I like the idea of, of getting to some Zay Jones. And then Marvin Jones is, is getting some ownership because he's 3,400. I, I, um, I'm i probably off of it if, if, if there's too much ownership. If there isn't, if there wasn't, I was going to be very high on it. And then if Jamal Agnew is healthy, he's your 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 sleeper play for me for Jacksonville. Um, as far as ATN goes, he's the, projected to be the, actually the highest owned running back on the slate as of right now. And I think that he's a, a legitimately good play. Um, but I would rather stick with the passing game from Jacksonville, maybe use Eckler. Actually, and Kelly's Kelly's a good long shot, large field play. Uh, maybe use Eckler with um, uh, either, I guess, they, I guess uh, Keenan Allen or DeAndre Carter, or Josh Palmer on the other side. But there's a part of me, I mean, Herbert Stacks makes the most sense to me. But I, I, with the Jacksonville pricing and the potential game flow, I sort of find myself more in the Jacksonville passing game than, than the Chargers at the moment. But that, you know, they're really close for me. Yeah, I mean, like with 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 Palmer at fifty three hundred and 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 Allen and Engram and Zay Jones. I mean, all these guys guys are so cheap. Kirk even at fifty nine hundred is cheap enough. Um, this there, this is this is the game people are gonna play. It's just too easy. Yeah. Um, like look what I just put in there. I put in I put in McCaffrey, and then basically just played everybody from this game. And really, you know, it's just it's simple. Um, yeah. uh, I just don't know how they get difference. Well, I mean, you get different by playing the San Francisco receivers. You know, you can do that. Don't like you said. Don't play McCaffrey. Play Jennings and 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 Ayuk. You know, or something like that. Right. You play Purdy. Right. There you go. Play Purdy with Jennings and Ayuk. Bade McCaffrey. And, and even then Purdy's going to have ownership too, by the way. It's, it's kind of a tricky state that way. Like I've got him as 24% right now. So they're all pretty high owned. One thing I will say, by the way, um, is that San Francisco has not looked like that great the last couple of weeks. I mean, they played like a, a minor league team against Arizona. And that game was actually competitive for a while. Right. They gave up a million points to the Raiders instead of the, the week before. So mm-hmm. Seattle, Seattle could put up points. And, and you know, if Seattle does, like, come out first drive and, like, score, all that means that San Francisco is going to go, go nuts also, <laughs> I think. Um, yeah. I like the San Francisco. If you're going to make a San Francisco stack, I would say play the Seattle defense against it, actually, on the two-game slate. Oh, that's cool. That, that's a good way to get different. And Seattle's right. cheap at, 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 at defense, and no one does that. But on a two-game slate, you should absolutely be playing your defenses against your quarterbacks a good percent of the time. Because just because people, I, don't have, that. I have a feeling. I have a feeling the Agnew play is a little showdowny. Um, I think you're right, but it's you know I've got to mention close that. enough to a showdown. You know, it's two games. You know, right. Um, and just just to give it, just to give uh, give everybody a, a preview, I, I am going to be playing everything this weekend. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I, I always do that in the playoffs. I love it. I'm going to play the six gamer, both two gamers, and uh, and all six showdowns. So uh, I, I'm I'm in there. Yeah. Um, so one that I haven't looked at yet are the Sunday games. So let's 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 take a look at that actually. Yeah, yeah we can do that on the fly. Am I literally? I don't even think I've looked at this at the salaries yet. Um, let's just take a look. So Miami Buffalo. Okay, okay. So first thing is that you got all kinds of quarterback stuff. So Tua out, Lamar Jackson is out. That's too bad. That's yeah. honestly too bad. I feel um, bad for Lamar Jackson. I really do. He's got to be really hurt. Or, or it, and there's also talk that some of them think he can play. I don't know what's going on, to be honest, but I do like Lamar Jackson, and I, I feel like I wanted him to have a chance at a title. I feel like this team, if they had the receiver, if they had a receiver who was healthy, um, could have a chance at it, but it's just going to be tough. <laughs> what are the chances? What are the chances Tua retires? How about that? I don't think he's going to retire. I don't think, I mean, maybe. I don't, I don't, I, I hope not. Why do you want him to retire? No, I'm, obviously. I mean, like the guy did the multiple head injuries, like uh, all all year long. I mean, yeah. I'm yeah. his wife. I'm not letting him play. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I, I guess Cincinnati is going to trash Baltimore again. Um, they just listen, I know Baltimore is game and they play hard, but. You don't have you don't have a quarterback in the playoffs in this spot. You're just not going to do it. I, I just I just don't see it. I, I I will say this that that in the every bit of my betting angles will tell me to play Baltimore. Um, and actually, I think that's what's going to happen. I think that's what I'm officially going to give out. I mean, Cincinnati handled it pretty easily last week. There should be no reason why they shouldn't this week. So let's go take Baltimore. How about that? Uh, that's that's what we're going to do. We're going to take Baltimore plus the points. Let me just go backwards through these games. Giants, Minnesota, that game opened at three and it has not budged one millimeter. Okay. And it makes sense because ain't nobody going to take the Giants at two and a half. And I don't think anybody, I thought there was a chance that a couple of, couple of people might, might play Minnesota three and a half, but no, I mean, it is going to, that is a stone three. And I have literally no opinion. I think I'll probably just, just, just side with Minnesota just for no reason. Um, obviously, I'm rooting for the Giants, but I'll side with Minnesota. The other spread thing, uh, Buffalo, 13 and a half against Miami. Miami's going to have Skylar Thompson. Um, I, yeah, I'll probably I'll probably take a shot. I'll, I'll, if Gun to my head, I would say Miami, maybe, but I doubt it. I mean, look, look for me. The only the only spread play I have is a most uncomfortable Baltimore against against the plus the points. Yeah, um, I, I do you like in the game? spread. I I I have I, I I like I think the Ravens is 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 a reasonable shot to take. I mean, Baltimore keeps the games low in general. Um, they haven't scored twenty points in like any game that Lamar hasn't started. I don't think so. That's a little concerning. <laughs> um, and it's not it's 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 tough defense. Um, that they're playing that they're playing against. So I am uh I I mean it's gonna be hard for me to see the Bills losing here. There's a part of me that just 13 and a half just feels like a lot of points, but at the same time, it's really hard to see. I do think we're gonna get into it when we talk about the DFS stuff in a second when we go game by game, because I, I think that you could talk about the uh I I don't know. I, I kind of like the the idea of playing the receivers from from Miami anyway. Um you're gonna get an unowned Jalen Waddle, an unowned Tyree Kill. That's enough for me uh, to get different on this slate enough. I mean, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, who is still banged up, is projected at like 4% ownership. Tyreek Hill is like 15. We saw, I mean, Tyreek Hill, even with Teddy Bridgewater, was like 20% owned on full slates. You know what I mean? So I, as far as Miami goes, just getting into the games, I, I do like, um, I like the idea of playing those receivers. And then it looks like we're going to have no, uh, what's his name, right? Uh most are still questionable and looking like he's going to be out. Uh, Jeff Wilson is is very very reasonable um, priced, and I think he's he's a reasonable play against a Buffalo team that hasn't been great against the run um, lately. And then on the Bills, I, I, I really I really I really do think this is their only shot. I mean, I'm looking at the weather too. It's not going to be bad in Buffalo, but it's going to be thirty. I, I, I don't know, man. It, let me tell you. So I'll, I'll put it to you another way. If Skylar Thompson can go into Buffalo in that environment, 
and keep this game close in any form and the coaching staff, whatever, I mean, God bless them. That's the best I can describe this. I mean, we've seen this years and years of football, especially in the playoffs, not to mention what's going on in Buffalo anyway. Whatever. This, this is a, this, I, I, and as much as I would like to play even Waddle and Hill, oh man, it's, it's just a tough spot. I don't know. It's just, it's really hard to see it happening, which probably means it's going to happen, but, but, uh, I, I don't I don't think I can do it. I just I'm, I, I think I might buy into it the the 31 to 10 narrative or something like that. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. know if I can do the Miami's. But like you said, if I'm thinking that way and I'm even looking for reasons to be different, right. maybe like like you said, Hill and Waddle are just gonna be nobody's gonna play them. Right, right. Um, that's that's what I think happens, and yeah. I also think that you know playing a Josh Allen hammer stack makes a lot of sense here. Um, the running backs are going to be low owned for, for the bills in a game that should fit a running script. Now they don't generally run that much anyway, but it is probably worth noting that, that cooker Singletary. I mean, I think that's, I think that's an interesting way to get a little bit different also. Um, and I think that, you know, Gabe Davis is my favorite of the receivers. Diggs is my second. And then I would get to some uh, Isaiah McKenzie. If he's a go, if he's out, I will consider some Cole Beasley. And I think Knox is just fine. Everybody else's rates fine for me in this game, but I I do think a Buffalo stack with a you know a Jeff Wilson and Tyreek or Jalen Waddle run back is is viable. I also want to say that maybe the best play in this game, just to get different, might be Mike Gusecki. This guy is getting zero ownership whatsoever. His targets have gone up with the backup quarterbacks. So that's you know tight end backup quarterback's best friend. Uh, I could see that being a thing. I could see I could see Mike Gusecki at thirty two hundred actually having a decent game. So that's that's all I've got for that. Um, all right, you ready to move on to uh, the, the Giants? Yeah, just, just just pause this for just a second. Yep. Hello. We were just finishing got talking about Buffalo, Miami, and uh, yeah, we were going. We were just about to start talking about Minnesota, the Giants. Yeah, jump um, on that one if you want to. Um, uh, I think actually that 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 Minnesota has been kind of just taken to the woodshed a little bit too much in the public. And, and I think they're going to play better. Uh, they, they played it. Listen, they played a tough game against the giants last time. Uh, it was back and forth. Giants had a two point conversion to tie it. And then uh, we'll drop three picks. And... Yeah. And the Minnesota had a 60 yard field goal to win it. Um, listen, the fact is, is that it's the playoffs. They're at home. They have the, the skill position guys. Uh, they have the best receiver on the, you know, best receiver on the board right in in, in jefferson um and i don't know i, I think that you're supposed to think you're supposed to play these guys you're supposed to play cook you're supposed to play jefferson go back to hawkinson has been just awesome um and i like these guys and uh the giants listen they've been kind of doing the whole season with smoke in smoke and mirrors you know a combination of, of a week schedule with some some good breaks and Really, really good coaching, if you want to know the truth. Um, putting themselves in a position to win these these kind of close games. But the fact is that Barkley's been pretty poor, um, I think. And they've been doing this with very few receivers. But you know what? These guys are super-duper cheap. I mean, like, Slade and Hodgins and James, they're all 4K. And you just, you're just going to have to do it. And I'll tell you something else who's been freaking playing his ass off is Daniel Jones the whole season. You know, so um, – I think that this is the game. Well, it's obviously, it's the one game without the team with a fifteen-point team total, right? Like these other two games. I think this is the game that people are going to stack, and it, and, and it makes perfect sense to me. So, <laughs> I'll probably be one of them and just pile on all these guys. Yeah, um, I, I like the. Uh, I think you, you, you know, I'll probably have a Giants receiver in every lineup, and I think it's hard, like it's easy to argue for two because it's easy to get them in, but they're just all going to be owned enough. Maybe playing Slayton, it'll be the slightly lower owned one of the bunch, is one way to do a little bit different things. Um, I like Barkley, and I also like Jones. Um, I think if you you could use Barkley in stacks with Jones if you want to. Um, on the other side, I think that Hawkinson is going to stand out as pretty clearly the top, or I don't know, pretty clearly, but the top tight end on the slate. Um, and I think that, you know, on the minute, the, the receivers, I, I do really like Jefferson here. Um, I'm a little, like, he's really good at home. And I think that maybe getting, to, what I may end up doing is just get, getting some KJ Osborne 
at, at low ownership because, you know, he's put up some big games this year, especially when they've needed it. And I think that's a, that's a viable route to go. What I'm probably not going to do is play Dalvin cook, but I'm, I'm not sure on that one yet. Um, but yeah, this is definitely the, the clearest game you want to stack. And, and I like cousins a lot more on this slate than I have on any slate that we've talked about in a very long time. So um, I would say the cousins to Jefferson with uh, I mean, maybe, I mean, I mean, look, so the fact that this is, I mean, like Jefferson last time they had, they played this exact game. He had 16 freaking targets. You know, yeah, 16 targets, a billion yards, only one touchdown, good for 34 fantasy points. And he was eight hundred, seven hundred dollars more expensive on a 15 game slate. Well, everybody was 700 more expensive because they dropped everybody. Right. No, no, I know. But but yeah, but, but still, I mean, now he's eighty six hundred on a two game slate. I mean, yeah, yeah, probably supposed to, probably supposed to play him. Which is which is why the whole country will. <laughs> yeah, but you, you play him with Osborne then with Cousins, you know what That's I mean? True. That's because right. of the San Francisco receivers being all, I'm sorry, the, the, the well, Giants receivers all being 4K, you, you, people aren't going to play Osborne. So you could play Jefferson Osborne uh, with, or even, or Thielen, but Jefferson should be low. I'm just, Osborne should be lower owned. Je- I'll, tell you, I'll tell you this, you could play, you play Jones too, you know, uh, maybe Jones with the, with the Vikings receivers. I don't know. Because <laughs> he could get, he could get a rushing touchdown. Be, I don't think, I think Jones will be just as popular as Cousins. I don't think he's, Anything. No, I know, but from a construction perspective, you know what I mean? Like, if you play yeah. Jones with – you can't play him without any, all these receivers. I mean, one of these guys is going to do it. I mean, like, it's just – you, you think you think so. But you could use him with Barkley and one of the receivers and then use Jefferson. And I still like the Osborne thing um, just because it's a, it's a, it's a high-risk play that's going to be low on because of where the pricing is. And I think that's totally worth taking a chance on. Um, any receiver that's put up 30 fantasy points in the game should have a chance of 4,600 here. Um, so I, I, I like that, that, that as a possibility of getting different within this game. That's pretty much the only one you can get different with, right? There's like nobody else who's viable, who's going to be super low owned. I, oh, I guess we, no, there's really n- nobody unless watch Kenny Galladay have like 110 yards and two touchdowns. <laughs> right. I don't think he's going to get a single snap. That's he probably I'm won't. Uh, he had a good, a good last game of the season though. That was it. <laughs> he had 100 yards, I think, receiving. Um, all right. Uh, Baltimore and Cincinnati. So, Sheets, how is your Baltimore going to keep it close, do you think? No idea. <laughs> I mean, literally no idea. You know, I know how that, well, I know how they're going to keep it close. I know they're going to try. You know, just they're going to run, they're going to they're gonna run the ball. You know, they're going to do, do that, do that thing with the three running backs and then, you know, then Huntley out of the, you know, coming off the coming off the edge, and maybe Dobbins breaks some. Maybe you know what I mean. That's that's what they're gonna do. Um, and or maybe listen, they'll that maybe they'll lean on Andrews. They gave him a week off, right? Uh, they say he was hurt, whatever. He he, had, yeah, he he was he was he was off week eighteen, and and that's what it's gonna be. It's gonna be it's gonna be Hunt. It's gonna be Harbaugh just doing his best. You know, it's gonna try to get. Uh, it's gonna be Andrews Dobbins. And maybe other running backs, you know, that's, that's how they're going to keep it close. And, you know, the other thing you do, you play Ravens defense or something like that, you know, uh, that, that's, that's, that's how they will, would keep it close if they do keep it close. They're not winning some freaking 45. They're not, they're not going to be competitive in a 35, 31 game. That's just not going to happen. Um, but that's, that's, that's the Baltimore scripts play Dobbins, play Andrews, maybe even play Huntley. But that's that's all I got. I, I don't I don't think that. Well, who's who's the who's the receiver? Robert Robinson. I mean, he is two cents. Okay, he's two cents, and he had nine nine he, targets last. Game. Tyler Boyd is two cents also. He's not a Baltimore. No, I'm just saying. Uh, you're trying to find some. I, don't think, find I, don't, I, don't, I think if you're playing, you're playing with Andrews. I don't. I don't think you should fade Andrews. Isaiah like What did Isaiah likely? Oh, he was only Andrews was out last week. Because Andrews is out, right? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's rough to keep it close. But, you know, listen, you know, maybe Pearl, a couple of tip balls. Baltimore gets a pick six. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, there's also a path that Huntley at 20 fantasy points, if he can get there, is going to be right there with the other guys at a little bit of a cheaper price. Yeah, that's true. But, so that's, that's very possible. Um, but in terms of, like, I, I really like, I mean, I think Cousins and Burrow passing stacks are the best ones for the slate. Um, 
And I think that I I will I will poke at the thing. I, I actually think Jamar Chase is a better receiver than than Justin Jefferson, and everybody can at me now. Um, Justin Jefferson's numbers on you're the not gonna, you're not going to get anybody to 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 throw shade on freaking Jamar Chase. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's awesome. He's awesome. I mean, that's that's yeah. comparing you know whatever. I mean, that's that's Zeppelin in the Stones. You know what I mean? Like you can't you can't really like right right right. You know, it's not a big deal. But. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, it, I mean, I guess I think of them because they played in college with Burrow together, which is pretty crazy. Which is ridiculous. <laughs> it's, it's really ridiculous. I love Joe Burrow, but at the same time, like he just set his season high touchdown record for, for touchdowns and he threw 35. Lamar threw 36 and his best receiver was, I think, Willie Sneed. <laughs> um, and, and, and I just think that's kind of wild because he does have a lot of talent around him. I uh, like Boyd. Uh, a lot because of the, again, people aren't going to play that price range because they'll all go to the Giants. So I think if you're going to do a double stack with Burrow using Boyd makes a lot of sense. I do like Hurst also, but he's going to get some ownership. My favorite, I think Hawkinson's the, 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 the everyone's top tight end. And I think he's clearly going to project as the top one. I think that playing Andrews is, is very, very reasonable here. Yeah. Um, and I think that, I think Dobbins will get lower ownership than maybe he should. He did look like he was hobbling when he was playing, but he had a week off. Now, now two weeks. So maybe maybe he gets a little burst back. So I don't mind him as a, as a somewhat low on play. And honestly, like if you're playing a bunch of lineups, you probably should get to some Huntley with Demarcus Robinson or something like that, or some Huntley with Andrews. I think Andrews is the obvious one, but no one. It's weird to have a three game slate and no one's going to play two of the quarterbacks. So playing either of those guys that prefer Huntley because the running upside, um, I think is is an interesting way to get different on this slate. But my favorite, like of the of the guys we talked about for these, you know, for the Sunday slate, I like the 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 Osborne. I like the Boyd um, as 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 the get different plays. Uh, Dobbins as as a low on running back, and I think that uh, other than that, and then and then one of Waddle or Hill. Those are my get different plays, and then my actual main plays are going to be Cousins stacks, Jones stacks, and Burrow stacks. Uh, with all that other stuff on the other side, I I still think I'm going to try to force in a little bit of this waddle um, waddle Tyree kill stuff. How about I got you? one for I got one for you. So uh, my 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 off the board play uh, again probably a little probably showdowny, and I end up I probably will have him in showdown. Try to get back all the losses for the rest of the day. Um, it Thank would be know. would be Irwin from Cincinnati. Um, it's so interesting. I, yeah, I'll throw him as a uh, that, that, whenever, that, that, whenever, that, that, whenever, whenever I need someone else to catch a ball, I always see Irwin catching it. So uh, can't beat him, join him. Why not? Yeah, well, keep in mind though, they've been down a receiver in almost all those spots, right? So like whether it was Higgins or Chase, yeah. he, he, you know that that had something to do with it. But yeah, but that is a, that is a real home runny type of one. I didn't expect that. Yeah, uh, well, it's three game slate. Anything's possible. Hey, yeah, I'll, I, I would say Trent Shurfield ahead of him, but that's, that's okay, that, well, that's another one. That's another good one too. You know, yeah. So, so, so I would just encourage people to make the uncomfortable plays this weekend and and just deal with it. You're go, you're going to you're going to if you're going to have a chance to win, you're probably going to have to make an uncomfortable play. Okay. Or two. All right. So so just so just just to just before we get audited here, okay. Penny Galladay. Oh, he didn't have 100 yards. He only had 30. Oh my god. Two <laughs> catches for seven, seven targets. Yeah. He's just the worst. <laughs> I don't but know. All, but all of a sudden. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like as much as Daniel Jones had a good season, I, I would completely support the Giants extending him and all that stuff. It's very strange to me that all of these receivers we talk about being horrible and they they like a lot of these guys are actually decent receivers other places. Like Darius Slayton is a, is a legitimate actual receiver. Yes. Kenny Galladay was a star when he went to the Giants. He, he uh, was. What happened with Shepard before, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, Giants were – Giants where receivers go to die, apparently. And there's a lot of good they, they, for a while. I thought they had like the, one of the best receiving cores in the NFL. I, like every year I look and I'm like, oh, these guys are and then no. Um, and, you, and you watch it, you watch at the end of the day, Kadarius Tony win the Super Bowl MVP. That'll that'll be the that, that would really be something. <laughs> that would be the Uber tilt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what if what if he wins it against the Giants, though? Then I guess you don't feel too bad. At least well, they it'll be just fine. Trust yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. That will be just fine. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, it should be a fun weekend. I'm going to be out most of the Wait, wait, wait. We got another game, I think. Oh, yeah. We got the Monday game. Sorry. Yeah. So let, let's, 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 let's find that game on the board here. Yep. And I have to quiz myself. Oh, is that, is that the Tampa game? Is that yep. what that is? That is some game, huh? <laughs> I do have a take on this game. 
All right. What do you what do you uh what do you like? I think Dallas wins by a million. Um, there it is. I don't care how bad they've looked the last couple of weeks. I, I just these teams are just on different galaxies talent wise. Now, would it surprise me? No, like the, Dallas will try to run the ball. The Tampa, even though they're not what they used to be, they still are good at stopping the run. Um, and it's t- it's tough. <laughs> um, so I, I don't know. Uh, I, it's going to be tough for Brady to to get there today I, in this game, in my opinion, just because I, th- I feel like he's going to have a lot of pressure on him. The one thing is that's going really Brady's direction, and I almost wish this game was on the main slate, is because I wouldn't mind just playing Mike Evans like everywhere. <laughs> like um, I, th- their corners are, they have they have the, the Digs who, cor- who gambles, and then they've got you know two replacements for their other corners. So like they're, they're in trouble a little bit, uh, especially with the deep ball. So that's the one way I could see Tampa Bay doing that, and then maybe forcing a couple turnovers from Dak or something. But I, I'm in, I'm in like Dak has been the worst ever the last couple of games. I'm kind of in. Ten on just going back to him, and uh, and and in the showdown slate, I would be playing. I would be getting exposure to Ty Hilton, Noah Brown, um, as as some cheapies, and I would get a lot of exposure to Julio Jones or Russell Gage as the other cheapies. Um, with my favorite, you know, I think CD is a really good play, and I think Mike Evans is a really good play here. Yeah, we'll bet a dollar on this one. I think Tampa wins. Um... I've just not been the slightest bit impressed by anything Dallas has done. Like, How about Tampa? Have they done one thing all year? They're the worst nothing. team in football history. Just, ever just literally nothing at all. Yeah, I'll, I'll, just take, I'll just take the points at home. and that's just that, I guess. Against the spread. That's it. Um, to make the playoffs. Uh, I'll just I'll just take the points at home and just, you know, and then, then you know, whatever. So, yeah. So um, yeah. Um, all right. We'll, we'll do this. We'll do the dollar. Um, We're in. Who do you, uh, hey, I got a question. I got a question. Totally off the beat, off the beaten path. Is there a day? Is there a big day NBA slate for Martin Luther King Day or no? I don't know. What is that? Tuesday? Monday. Monday. Oh, um, let me. Just I know it's an international holiday. I mean, I don't, I don't know if they're, they're, they're running it. I don't know. I'll take a quick I'll look look real, real quick and find, let you know in two seconds. Um, yeah, it is. Monday. Yeah, there's a big, big, big slate in the morning. So we'll be ready. Yeah, I figured. I figured. I figured. Yeah. yeah, we'll be firing for that. For that big one. Um, maybe that's where some of the tickets are going. Oh, by the way, I'm going to have to get your UFC advice because I accidentally won some UFC tickets last night. Or... Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Got it. All right. Well, good luck, everybody. It should be a fun weekend. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll try to do the best we can with the live. It's going to be a little tricky for me on Saturday. I'm going to try it for Sunday. And then Monday, I'll be back in business. So that's where I'm at. Anything, Sheets, before we get out? Stop recording and then I'll...